little time in my life. I was living in sin, oh, I'll cry. It made me start to wonder what I did wrong that made my race so hard to run. So without you, Lord, without you, Lord, I can't make it without you. Say good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome, everyone, to our Russell Road morning worship service. Lord, it's been good to us, and this time we got an opportunity to worship him in spirit and in truth. So far, he's kept the virus away from our congregation, so just thank him for that. Um, want to remember to keep all of our sick and shut in in our prayers. Uh, you can text them or go by and see them, keep Keep your distance, keep your mask on, and you may be able to visit. I'm sure that will make them feel a lot better. Um, I want to remind everyone to remember to keep your face mask over your nose and your, your mouth. Um, and that, that cuts down on the transmitting of the uh, virus. Uh, we have National Dinner Day in support of Southwestern Christian College. Uh, it'll be this Sunday, November 8th. You may purchase your ads now for little Jail Amari Lyons, daughter of Asia and granddaughter of Adrian and Trudy Saldana. The tickets are on sale now and, and plans are to have a delicious pick up dinner. Um, you can also buy ads. Uh, Tickets are thirty dollars. Well, for the dinner, the uh, tickets are thirty dollars for adults, and fifteen dollars for children. Okay, it's twenty-five dollars for adults, and fifteen for children, under twelve. You may purchase a ticket from Sister Cassandra Patterson or Sister Doris Dansby, or you can call the office for a ticket. Want to remember to uh, extend our Condolences to the, the family of Sister Lida Green at her passing. Remember to keep them in your prayers. We have anniversaries coming up this month. Today, Brother Jesse Williams and Sister Vanita Williams made six years of matrimony. Give them a hand. And on the 6th of this month, Brother Ronnie and Candace Garrett will make five years. Give them a hand. And on the 20th of this month, Brother Charles Rambo and Sister Eva Rambo will make 21 years of matrimony. Give them a hand. As far as I know, at the immediate time, we will continue to have services at 10.15 on Sunday morning. We have it on Zoom, Sunday evenings beginning at 6 p.m. And on Wednesday nights, we have Bible study, which you can attend here at the building. And that's all the announcements that I have this evening. This time we'll be led by prayer by Brother Ernest Lee. Good morning. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for blessing us all to get up this morning, close in our right mind. Father God, we thank you for giving us safe passage to our congregation that we might be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we pray that you bless the sick and the shedding, and Father, pray that you bless the homeless. Father, we pray that you 
Bless the elderly, Father God, that they might have strength to overpass this treacherous tr coronavirus. Father God, in the young and the medium age, just bless us all, Father, that we might make it through this pandemic, that we might continue to bless, to be blessed and praise your name. Father God, we pray that you bless the officials that lead in our country, whoever it might be, Father God, that they might come together, get their mind together, and learn that we are all equal and children of God. Father, we pray that you watch over the ones that's doing the damage, the whatever boys they call themselves. Pray that they get their mind right, that they can uh, calm themselves down, stop confusion. Father God, we continue to pray that we can join here often as we can, Father. Pray that one day we'll get in our right place in the, in the sanctuary, that we can all join together, see each other. Thank you for the little bit we have in this gym that we can be spaced out. Thank you for blessing us with this space. Father God, we continue to pray for all the congregations all over the United States that they can continue to praise your name and continue to have service. We continue to love each other in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' precious name, we pray and thank. Amen. Once again, it's so good to be back in the house of prayer once again that we might offer praises unto our God and our Father. We're so great because he woke us up this morning. And because of that, that blood is still running warm in our veins. So our first selection this morning is in my veins. It's in my veins. Earl is in my veins, Lord, in my veins. It's in my veins, Lord, in my veins. While the blood is running warm in my veins. Oh, Lord, it's in my vein. Oh, well, it's in my vein, Lord, in my vein. It's in my vein, Lord, in my vein. While the blood is running warm, it's in my vein. Oh, Lord, it's in my vein. And I'm going to sing a little over here. And I'm going to sing just a little over there. While the blood is running war in my, oh Lord, it's in my vein. Oh, well, it's in my vein, Lord, it's in my vein. It's in my vein, Lord, it's in my vein. While the blood is running war in my, oh Lord, it's in my vein. And I'm going to pray a little over here. And I'm pray just a little over there while the blood is running war. It's in my, oh Lord, it's in my vein. Oh, well, it's in my vein, Lord, it's in my vein. It's in my vein, Lord, my vein. And while the blood is running, it's in my vein. Oh Lord, it's in my vein. And I'm going to love a little over here. And I'm going to love just a little over there. While the blood is running in my, oh, Lord, it's in my, oh, well, it's in my vein, Lord, it's in my vein. It's in my vein, Lord, it's in my vein. While the blood is running warm. In my, oh Lord, it's in my veins. Amen. Our next selection will be Send the Light, number 217. Send the Light. Without the light, we cannot make it. Send the Light. <clears throat> 
Yeah, the call come to ring it over the first stage away. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed God, the dead is from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel, let it shine forevermore. We have heard the mass, the dawn of call today. Send the light, send the light, and a golden offering of the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light. Send the light, the blessed God, that is shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed God, that is shine forevermore. Let us not grow weary of the works of love. Send the light. Send the light, let us gather jurors for the crown of the send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed God, let it shine from shore to shore, send the blessed God. Let it shine forevermore. Hilltops of glory, number 284. Hilltops of glory. Onward rejoicing, I tread like way. I am climbing. Each passing day, hilltops of glory, now rise and build, where all shall be made new. I'm singing hilltops of glory, I now can see, oh brother, won't you come go with me? Safe on the mountain, I soon shall stand. Few types of glory, land. Way down in Egypt, mid burning sand. Moses has started for Canaan land. Never turn back. Oh, always a sin. Will weather come? I'm singing hilltops of glory that I now can see. Oh, brother, one, come go with me. Say, Father, and I soon shall stand. Hilltops of glory, land. Footsteps of Jesus before us lead. We tread like church, his one in he. Evil cannot prevail. And I'm on the earth, what tread. I'm singing hilltops of glory, I now can see. Oh, brother, won't you come go with me? Say, Father, my I soon shall stand. Hilltops of glory, then. Amen. As we prepare for the Lord's Supper, notice number 732, were you there? Were you there? 
number 732. Would you there, when they crucified my Lord, were you there, were you there, when they crucified my Lord, were you It causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there? Is at this time in our worship service that we remember the great sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This memorial feast is designed to remind us of the cost to our Savior, of how he willingly gave his life that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. In Acts the 20th chapter and verse number 7, we find that it was upon the first day of the week that the disciples came together to break bread. We as members of the New Testament church do likewise. We also find in the Apostle Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth in the 11th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse, the Apostle Paul telling the church at Corinth these words. He says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, how the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, how he took bread, and when he had given thanks, precious Father in heaven, with our hearts humble, we approach thy throne of grace. Thanking you, Father, for the blessed sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask, Father, that at this time that your blessings might be upon this bread as we take it in memory of his sacrifice on Calvary's cross on our behalf. We ask, Father, that as we partake in this memorial feast, that we might remember our commitment to him, and that we might, Father, live our lives worthy of our vocation for which we have been called. These and many other blessings we ask in his precious name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. Let us pray. Most holy and righteous Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, and we ask your blessings upon this cup, which represents the precious blood that your son, Jesus Christ, shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sins. We ask, Father, as we partake in this memorial feast, that we might see the anguish that our Savior suffered on our behalf as he shed his blood on the cruel cross of Calvary, that we might have remission from our transgressions. We pray, Father, that you would bless this congregation and its leaders, that we might lead this congregation in a way that's worthy of your son's sacrifice, in his precious name, amen. Amen. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it 
in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and ye drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death <coughs> until he come. Thank you. Who has an offering? This time we give back to God according as God has richly blessed us. In 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter, beginning with the first verse, the Bible reads, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. We look further into 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, beginning with verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. May we pray. Almighty God in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, I ask you, Father, to please forgive me of my many sins as I approach your throne. And then we ask collectively, Heavenly Father, that you forgive us of our many sins. Not only are you able to recognize every wicked thought or deed, but praise be thy name, because you can read our hearts and you know that we have given you the praise, the honor, and the glory for every single morsel that has passed across our lips. We thank you, Father. Continue to God bless, prosper us in every single way, Heavenly Father. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus. Let us all say amen. amen. If, you just, if you have, you desire to give. The glory land way. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way, telling the world that Jesus say today, I'm in the glory and way, I'm in the glory land, glory land way, I'm in the glory, glory land way. Heaven is near as the way grows is clear afar. I'm in the glory, glory land way. Our scripture reading this morning will be read from the book of Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 15 through 20. And it reads, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and doing of his word. Let us all be standing for prayer.
Let us bow toward our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father God of heaven, it's once again that we humbly bow before your throne of grace. Again, Father, to give thee some thanks for the many blessings of this life that you have so abundantly departed upon each and every one of us. But first of all, Father, we come thanking you for your most precious gift that is in the person of your son, Jesus. In him, Father, being obedient to your word, come to a dying and sinful world and gave his life that we, so obedient to his will, could have eternal life. We come praying for those who will be sick among us. If it be your will, that you will give them a reasonable portion of heaven's strength. And they, too, may be able to assemble themselves in this place and lift up your holy and righteous name. Father, we pray at this time that if there's one or, one or more among us, Father, that have not been in obedient, obedient to your truth, we pray, Father, when the message is extended and the invitation is extended, that one or more may come down the aisle and put your song on in baptism. Now, Father, we want to further the seeds of our, our service. We pray, Father, for the thing that be said and the thing that will be done will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's say amen again. Amen. We are happy to see everyone here this morning. I don't know about you, but I'm just glad to be here. God did not have to allow me to come out this morning, but he did. Sister Phyllis Rattler on last Thursday asked for prayer for her sister. And then on Friday, I believe it was, or Saturday, Sister Rattler's sister that wasn't doing good, she passed away. So remember her in your prayers. Sister Abner's daughter tested positive for uh, the virus. And I... And Sister, Rat, Sister Abner was to go get tested, but I said, no matter what the test comes back, positive or negative, you need to quarantine yourself. And so I told the ladies at the door, if Sister Abner came, that she needed to go back and quarantine. And so I hope nobody would get upset with that, because if we hear of somebody that needs to quarantine, we're going to confront them at the door. Amen? We have evil all around us. In Texas, a bus was run off the road yesterday. Pray for my three grandsons, Scooter, uh, Kenny, and, and James. They're going to New York to be with Jalen. So uh, that was against my will, but we can't do nothing with some of them. National Dinner Day on next, next Sunday. We would do immediately following the services, we would crown our little queen, and then we have takeout dinners that's been catered. And I think it's smothered pork chops, pinto beans, uh, candied yams, and cornbread, and cornbread. And I'll go get some sodas or something where you can have a soda with it also. And uh, they're down, took $5 off since it's a carryout and we won't be setting down. So with that in mind, we want to remember our little queen, the crowning of her will be right over here. Afterwards, we won't have to move our chairs or anything like that. We just give thanks to God, for Vince and his wife, Karen, and all of you who are here right now. If the governor does not put additional uh, restrictions on us, then we will be looking into starting our adult Bible class on Sunday morning. We can't, we can't start our little kids Bible class because we don't, we, we, we don't know how to separate everything right now, but we can stay separated in here for our adult Bible class. So the brethren will be meeting on that and we will let you know. 
Now, now, are you glad to be here? Yes. Do you love one another? Yes. Tell somebody you love them. You may not never have another chance. Love everybody. We would mark your hymn books for our song of imitation. That there's a fountain free. Song of imitation, there's a fountain free. Our next election before the speaker come this morning will be Yes, God is real. Yes, God is real. There are some things I may not know. And there are some places I can't go, I cannot go, but I am sure. Oh, this one thing that God is real, for I can feel Yes, God is real. He's real in my soul. Yes, God is real for him and made me whole and made me whole. His love for me. Yes, God is real. Oh, I can feel Him in my soul, in my soul. Some folk may doubt. Some folk may scorn. How can these words and leave? Me alone, leave me alone, but as for me, as for me, I'll take God's part, for God is real, and I can feel Him in my heart. Yes, God is real. He's real in my soul. Yes, God is real. For and made me whole and made me His love for me. Yes, God, oh, him in my soul, I cannot tell just how you feel when Jesus took your sins away, your sins away, but set that day. Yes, yes, that I oh, God has been real for his holy power. Yes, God is real. So real in my soul. Yes, God is real. 
He's real. He's real. I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care what anybody else proclaims. God is real. Good morning, family. It's just so good to be here this morning and see all of you here this morning to worship our God. And as it's been said through our prayer this morning, morning in spirit and in truth. If we came in here this morning for anything else other than that, then God is not satisfied. He's only satisfied with that which is earnest and honest. Because that's who he is. There's one thing that God cannot do. Now, most will say he can't lie. That's true. But one thing for sure that God cannot do, he cannot fail. God cannot fail. I can honestly stand here this morning and tell you, if, I, if you ask me to do something, I would honestly and earnestly try to do it, but I might fail. You can ask God anything, and it's impossible for him to fail. It's possible for you and I to fail because we are limited in who and what we are. Didn't start out that way, we were not limited. But by our own volition, we have entered into this place, into this area where we need some help. And that help was given to us by his son, Jesus Christ. This morning, as we read, we're going to talk about power this morning. I'm not going to talk about, I'm not talking about that TV show, that series that a lot of us got into. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about some power this morning. The Bible does, does say in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of this power to us who believe according to the mighty of his of his working of uh, my working of his power. My first assignment was Ellsworth Air Force Base, South Dakota. And some friends of mine thought it was a great joke to, because I left, I grew up in Maryland, a lot of trees. And then they said, Vince, look at this picture. And it was a black dot on this white picture, and it said, Vince, that's the only tree that you're going to see in South Dakota. And while I was there, my job was to secure nuclear weapons. That was my job. And so I went on convoys out to the missile field. Some of those, those trips were 130 miles one way and 130 miles back. Long days. Get up 3 o'clock in the morning, and I wouldn't end, a day wouldn't end until probably about 5 or 6 that evening. I even allowed access to some of these areas. Even when I came here, my next assignment was Barksdale Air Force Base. And as I got to that particular location, same thing. I, I secured nuclear weapons. I also allowed access. And then... At some point, I became the convoy commander of those weapons, escorting them back and forth to aircraft on alert. But then I changed jobs. And then when I changed jobs, I had to learn about those same weapons, how to respond to those weapons in case of an emergency, in case those weapons were involved in an accident. And so I had to learn about nuclear half-lives. I had to learn about Clyde Top and cloud bottom. Had to learn about mock stem and nuclear isotopes and all these other things. I'm getting nerdy right now. But the point is, is that my perspective changed once I learned about the power that was exerted by those weapons. It all changed. At one point, I just secured weapons, and I, I, knew that they were, I knew that they were dangerous, but I didn't know how much power was involved. 
But then as I learn about the weapon, as the perspective of my, as my job changed, I had to learn a different way or different ideal about that particular weapon and its power. That weapon that was dropped on Hiroshima back in World War II was, uh, it killed 90,000 people, 166,000 uh, of those uh, folks were in Hiroshima. The same weapons today, same weapons today are 3,000 more times more powerful than that weapon dropped in 1944. Talking about power this morning. In our text this morning, we read about a different kind of power. Paul tells us that the Ephesians had been praying, that he had been praying for the church at Ephesus, that they would understand the immeasurable greatness of God's power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might. And when we look at this word power, sometimes we limit it to one thing, uh, that, that one word talking about or dealing with where I, we get our word dynamite from. But there are three aspects of God's power. Three aspects. One is that dynamic power, but it also means I am able. I am able. Jesus uses the same language uh, in, in John chapter, uh, in, jo in the book of John, he uses it seven times. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the, I am the light of the world. I am the, I am the door of the sheep. I am the resurrection of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I, I am the true vine. Moses used that same language, or same word, uh, when, when Moses asked God, who shall I say sent me? He says, I am. But then he goes on with this word power. We need to understand that it means also God's power means to work. Not mere but potential, but it is active power, if you will. It also means that God's power, that he rules. He has absolute dominion over everything. And then also it means that he has inherent strength. Now what is that word, it's, it's inherent strength? We, uh, we, we look at that and we have to understand that the sun has power. Some will say that's inherent power. That's not inherent power because God gave the sun power. God is power. There's a difference. See, you and I may have power. My, my body may have some type of power, but I, I need something to fuel it. I need something to keep it going. God has power. God is power. That's God. All God, all by himself. And so it's important for us to understand the power that Christ has given us. We need to know and remember that the power so that we can know and remember who and what we have. We have to know that. We have to understand that. And so Paul told the church in Ephesus that he was praying that you may know what is the hope, a confident expectation of what God has called us to do. But why? Why, why should this all matter? Why do I need to know about this power that God has given us, or given me. Why should it be important to know the hope and the riches and the power that we have in Christ Jesus? Why do I need to know that? Well, if I don't know these things, my faith can become dull and listless. And the church can end up being nothing more than a ritual or, or burden, if you will. It's only in knowing the, the power, that explosive power of Christ's grace that I can begin to live like someone that has some power. Carrying a, a rifle or carrying a gun with no bullets is one thing, right? But it's an entirely different thing when it has bullets. See, I have to carry it a little bit differently. I have to understand that, 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 that I can hurt somebody with this particular weapon. And so therefore, it, 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 it's something different about that. I can have a dummy grenade. You were an army man, right? Oh, yeah. So there were dummy grenades, right? Yeah. But how much farther do you throw that real grenade than that dummy grenade? Oh, yeah. you're going to get it out the way. <laughs> Brother Ken said, you're going to get it out the way. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but what can I do to help me to know about Christ's power? What can we do collectively? Well, I can learn to know Christ's power in the same way that I learned about those nukes. No secret. No secret. This is the open book test. Open book. How many of us like open book tests? Didn't you like it when you walked into the classroom and the teacher said, open book test? I loved it. Because sometimes I didn't study. But the point is, is this, this is an open book test. I've either seen this power or read about this power. In the same way we can learn and know about Christ's power, about what we've seen in him do in our lives. Has Christ done something in your lives this morning? Has God something done something in your lives this morning? See, if you've seen this, or you experience this, there's something to learn about that. Or we can learn to know his power by what we read in his word. Now, they say a lot of times, if you want to hide anything, put it in the book. That's sad. It really is sad. It's really sad when I hear someone say, I don't like to read. That's really sad to me. Because everything that we need to know is written in a book. Everything we need to know about life is written in a book. In the same way, we need to, the, the, the scripture is filled with stories of men and women who experience God's power. There's a story of a man who used to read to his son. And as he read to his son, he read to him out of the Bible, and he read with anticipation and excitement. And then a lot of times his dad would stop in the middle of the story and just talk about certain characters in the Bible. He created an atmosphere of expectation and excitement. And so when that son grew up, he grew up and believed the power of God by the way that his dad lived his life. See, God wrote the, the Bible in the same way. He told us real stories about real men and women who faced real challenges and experienced the real power from on high. Where does this power come from? We know it comes from God. The power comes through, from God through Jesus Christ, and we have this immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe. And so there's a qualifying statement there. Toward us who believe. If I believe I have power, I have power. If I don't, then I'll live that way. A lot of us live not knowing and understanding the power that has been given to us. And, and, and so we live lives, we live dead lives in a dead world. Yeah. Now you would think that that would be a, a gimme statement. You would think that every Christian would know that God is a source of power. But too often we don't. We don't. We live like God is not even there. When you build a house, you build a, that house and you put everything in it that you want to, and that structure goes up. But every once in a while, every once in a while, sometimes we'll build an addition to what's not there, a temporary structure, if you will. Some people will call it a lean-to. Uh -huh. It's not the real house that you live in. It's a lean-to. Mm -hmm. You know where I'm going with this? God, at times, is a lean-to in our lives. God is that lean-to. He's not at the main part of our lives. He's, the, he's not the main part of how we, we live and think. He's an afterthought. And when he is an afterthought, then, then, then our, his power in our lives is limited. In, in, in Acts chapter 4 and 24, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported what the chief priests and, and and, 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 and elders had done to them. And when they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. They didn't go right out and preach and, and talk about it. They said they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Now the Lord, now, now when they considered the threats and all of these other things, but the, the, the thing that the, they, they did was that they prayed and obeyed God. God was not a lean-to in their lives. Too many times, God is a lean-to in our lives. When we look at this, 
Catch it. After they prayed, the place where they were sitting or meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. They received power. Where did that power come from? That power came from God. God literally shook the building that they were meeting in. He didn't shake the building on the outside or around it. He shook the building that they were in. And notice something else. From that point on, Peter and John were preaching, and not only them, all of those who are in the house. What I'm saying this morning, there's not just power in my life. There's not just power in Brother Dansby's life. There's not just power in Brother Brown's life or brother kids like that, there's power in all of our lives. And we need to start living like it. People with power. Not, not people with, who, are, who are down and out and struggling. People who have actual power in our lives. We have it. We have it. They asked for the power, and they didn't, they didn't presume it. They asked for it. And God was available to give it to them. Why don't we have power in our lives? Maybe because we don't ask for it. Maybe because we don't ask for it. Simple thing, isn't it? I'm not gonna, this is not something that's hidden. Again, it's, it's revealed to us. The first thing that they did, they went to God and not to themselves. That's the first thing. They didn't go to themselves, they went to God. Too many times we go to ourselves, ask ourselves a question. And then we answer ourselves. And that means we don't do anything. Or we go to somebody else who we think will say the right thing to us or the thing that we want to, them to say to us and they don't want to do anything. So they tell you not to do anything. And so it's an it's a, it's a ongoing thing, right? We don't do anything. Except going to that person, that one person you know that will tell you what you need to do, you won't go to them. You won't go to them. Boy, if I, if I go to them, if I go to Brother Rambo, he's going to tell me to pray. <laughs> if I go to Brother Rambo, he'll tell me to have some patience. If I go to Brother Rambo, he'll tell me that I need to go to Bible study. I don't want to go to Brother Rambo. I'm going to find somebody else. I'm going to find somebody else to tell me what exactly what I want to know. God is a lean-to. He has become a lean-to in our lives. He's not the main source of power. He is, he, he's been made to as an add-on. This is why we need to know the power God has given us, the power that we're sitting on this morning. We need to know the power we have in our hands, and too often we get frustrated and angry because things aren't working out the way that we would think they should work out in our lives. We panic. We end up doing and saying things that we ought not to say or think and, and do not know why things don't turn out the way we want to. Why isn't God, why isn't God doing what he's doing for somebody else? Because we put our faith in the wrong things and the wrong people. God has become that lean-to in our lives. And so we don't pray and we don't obey. And God, subsequently, we have no power to operate on. If we don't know and understand the power of God we have, to, if we have access to, that's what will happen to our, in our lives. We will become listless, aimless in our society. You know why all the riots are going on right now? Listless and aimless. Listless and aimless can't figure out what to do, so I'll just steal something. Can't figure out what to do, I'll just destroy something. Can't figure out what to do, then I'll just burn it down. It just, that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm going to burn down the store in my neighborhood. I'm going to burn down the, the grocery store in my neighborhood. I'm going to burn down the, the gas station in my neighborhood. Not anybody else's neighborhood. Because if you come in my neighborhood, I'm, I'm going to have something for you. See, that's, there's a difference. Not having power will do that to you. And so we have to understand what we have. And if we don't understand the power that God 
has for us and that we have access to, these things will happen. We have power. Ask Paul and Silas. In jail. Not in any jail. But they were in a dungeon. They were in a dungeon, naked, chained to the guards, singing praises to God at midnight. Then God decided to cause an earthquake. You ever notice something about the earthquake? That the jail doors opened up and that the, and that the shackles fell off, but it didn't destroy the jail? That's the power of God. That's the power of God. Lazarus in that tomb. You remember the story. Jesus calls Lazarus. Do you not know that there are other dead people in the tomb? But who got up? Just Lazarus. See, God can work around all the dead things and just get you. That's the God that we serve. There was an interesting story that was written about the power of God. And this one author noted that in the book of Judges, an enemy general named Caesarea was defeated with a tent peg and a hammer. A judge named Shamgar defeated the Philistines with a cattle prod. Gideon beat his enemy with jars and torches. Jericho's walls were brought down with trumpets. Moses bought the Israelites out of Egypt using a simple shepherd's staff. Then he observed this. God seems to use common things and common tools, the stuff of cooking and building and farming, to show his power. The most obvious reason that he wanted to remind Israel over and over again that it's not military security that, uh, that their strength came from, but it was from him. Not from weapons, not from personal ability, but the power of God. The very strangest of the tools had them used, that he had them used was, was, was a whole point. Nobody could say, nobody can say that without God or with, uh, without God that they can win anything. It could be a tin peg, cattle prod, jawbone, pebble, a stone, or water soaked off of an um, altar. It doesn't matter. With God, God can do anything and everything. Zechariah says this, not by my might, nor by my power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. God showed his power in the face of seemingly overwhelming odds. He defeated those overwhelming odds by things which were common and useless in the face of everybody else. There are some things in our lives that we count as useless that God can use. I like to think of thinking myself as useless, but God is using me. So that makes me somebody. Whether anybody else thinks otherwise, God thinks something else. There was a big contrast even at the cross. Rome, the most powerful force in the world, Seen gathered the battalion soldiers to confront the king of kings. They were armed, he was stripped. They came with swords and spears, but he came nothing but the word of God. Their hands were accustomed to the most advanced weapons. His hands were accustomed to a carpenter's tool. And yet when the dust settled, when it was all over, Rome's weapons, their cruelty, their cross, their punishment, all of that was inflicted on God, he still got up from the grave. In the end, the warriors were no match, no match for the carpenter. Understand this morning, that's the power that we have from God. That's the power we need to operate in. That's the power that we need to depend on this morning. God is with us. God is willing to help us. God is able to protect us. God is our Father. God is a husband to the widow. God is our friend. God is aware of my struggle. God is my friend. God is that good listener. God is powerful. God is merciful. God is good. 
God is a provider. God is the one with my answer. The one who loved me will always be there, even when no one else is. God gives me power. God is ready to forgive me, and God is here and now. God is. God is. What is God in your life this morning? What kind of power do you have? Are you operating on this morning? I'm not talking about getting up and drinking that V8 like I do. I'm not talking about getting up and eating that biscuit. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that power that makes you go when you feel that you can't go. Power allows you to get up when you feel that you can't get up. Power that allows you to walk when you feel you, you can't take another step. Power that allows you to see the good when seemingly there is no good. See, that's the kind of power that I'm asking, do you have this morning? Do we have that power collectively? Do I have that power individually? And if I don't have it this morning, then why don't I have it? Because God has given it to me. See, there's no reason. Remember my father years ago, when I was coming up, he said, you have one job, Vince, one job. Go to school and get your lesson. That's your job. That's your only job. He, he repeated that over and over again. Why? Because that was my only job. And everything that I needed to know was in that school. I'm saying this morning that our job and our only job is, a, is to obey God. And everything he has given us is in his word. His words are true. His words are, tr uh, are wholesome and his words are powerful. Where is God? Where is the power in your life this morning? And if you don't have that power, why don't you have it? Have, have you heard how Jesus died and he was buried, rose again on the third day? Have you heard that and believed that and repented of your sins and confessed it? Submit yourself to water baptism and put you into Christ Jesus, and then you can operate in that power. You have power. He grants that to you. But if you're here this morning and you're walking around half, on half empty, a quarter tank, the light's on. No reason for the light to be on. <laughs> Brother Danzig got on me one time. We were driving to Abilene. Me, myself, myself, I was doing all the driving to Abilene. My first lectureship, Brother Lockhart was in the car. And I'm driving. I'm used to driving until the light comes on, and then I'll get some gas. <laughs> that light came on, and Brother Daniel looked up, he said, I got a pocket full of money, and you, go, and you run around on E. <laughs> Probably I pulled over and got some gas. God is looking at us this morning. You are my child, and you're running on E. You're running on a quarter tank, a half tank. You can be full all the time. Why are you running around with no power? And I have all power. Running around here whining. I'm, I'm going to stop. stop. <laughs> where are you at this morning? Where are we at this morning? We. Where are we at this morning? What are you operating on this morning? If you're here this morning, don't leave here. Don't leave here deficient in any way. Leave here full. Leave here full. No reason to leave here on empty. No reason to he leave here on a half a tank. Don't leave reason to leave here on three quarters of a tank. Leave here full. If you're subject, won't you come? the power do you have this morning? What are you operating on this morning? Is there a need here this morning? We all need something. We all stand in the need of something. 
will you come? To the fountain free, will you come? Tis for you and me, thirst is so. We could all say that, can't we? Yes. When we got up this morning, we said, God taking care of me again. Yes. Isn't that something? Yes. That's something. It's all right. It's good to see this young man in uniform this morning. I just want my, my wife, as he walks in, he says, Oh, that looks like you. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't look that good. But anyway. It's good. I don't know if he's going to work or coming to wet bacon work, but it's just it's good to see someone say, I'm going to take time out for God this morning. It's just good. Encourage that young man. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful this morning for your word and what it's able to do, Father, to prick on his heart. And so we're so thankful, Father, for your sister, our dear sister, Father, who has so boldly stood and admitted fault. Father, we pray that we would, she would not be entering into that particular transgression again, Father, and to give her strength, Father, for your word that she might not do that again. But also, Father, we pray for our dear sister who has stood and, and just thankful, Father, for what you have provided her. And we pray, Father, that we all can stand and boldly stand and say, Father, how good and great you are in our lives. That we may be a living testimony to those who are walking in darkness. We continue, Father, to pray for this great congregation and for the great people that are here this morning. Pray in Son Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's say amen again. Amen. I'm, I'm appreciative of that sermon on power, and I know you are too, and I appreciate Vince and his humble attitude and it's he's here with us now i was getting calls from a lot of young men who knew i was getting old and uh i said well i don't know they say well uh brother danzy he says uh, i would like to come to to russell road because i like the way you drive i said what do you mean he said well i come there how can i get a car I said, you can join the Air Force and stay 30 years and buy your own. <laughs> he said, what kind of contract would I get? I said, you won't get a contract. He said, well, maybe after you're gone, I can come. I said, well, I got some brother in there that'll handle you real good. So never, ever 
be guided by the way a guy can rattle the benches because you don't really know their real motives. Thank you, Vince. Thank you. That's Christopher Brayboy back there. He's a weatherman just like I was. <laughs> Glad to see you. This is Jeff's grandson, Amen. Vincent. He's stationed at Barksdale. Amen. I talked to Denzetta Moran. Edward is ailing, so remember him in your prayer. Again, remember Sister Rattler. And uh, Doris said something yesterday that reminded me of the last time Junior and Henry and myself played golf together. There were some guys that was acting up in the front, and I wanted to be cool, but Junior and Henry didn't want to be cool. <laughs> You remember that, Henry? We were at Quervis. Well, yesterday, a guy pulled into a parking place that Junior was getting, and Junior pulled in behind him and wouldn't let him out. And Doris been telling him not to do that. <laughs> the guy got asked, I guess you want to punch me now, Junior? He said, no, you're not worth punching. I just wanted to see what you look like. <laughs> We're here, now I talked to Dr. Seamster yesterday, and he was asking me about how it was in yesteryear when we had to buy poll tax to vote. And I told him that my dad had to buy poll tax, and sometimes he didn't have the money to do it, but he scraped up the money. I told him about how Brother Brown said he had to get five uh, Caucasian people to sign on for him to vote here. But you don't have that problem now. Mm -hmm. So go ahead on and vote. People shed their blood. You go ahead on and vote. And I'm going to tell you something. I remind, I'm reminded of a song. Y'all remember that song that says, the future is not mine, you see. Whatever will be, will be. Any of you old enough to remember that? Well, I'm going to tell you something that it really doesn't matter who's in the White House. What matters is who's in the church house. And God is still in control. Vince talked about that power, and tonight on Zoom, I'm going to talk about the power of elections, and that you don't need to worry about any herd or nerd immunity and none of that stuff. But I did get a call from somebody who claimed to be Swepco, and they might be calling you too. They call the church. They called me when was yesterday, telling me that I hadn't paid my electric bill and my lights were going to be cut off today and all of that. Well, I know I paid my light bill. So that's people calling around to scam you. You better be real careful because they're going to ask you for, send you somewhere where you give them a card or something and you're going to be the lost that money. Number one, keep up with your bills. Pay your bills on time. But if you get a call like that, call the electric company. They'll tell you whether that's, it's a sham that's going on, so be careful. And there's going to be more of them going on in the future, so remember that. So I'm just blessed to be here. I'm so glad to see our sister here, Taurus Posey's mama. Where are you? There she is back there. Glad to have you with us again. You were here with us before. We are certainly happy. You are our honored, honored guest. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you again real, 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 real soon. Tune in tonight on Zoom, and we are thankful for our Bible class on Wednesday night. We had a prayer meeting requested on Thursday night, and if any of you brethren want to Supervisor prayer meeting on Thursday night. I don't have anything to do at night. I can put it on Zoom, and whoever wants to manage a prayer meeting, we can't pray too much. So let's all remember that. And then on next Sunday, remember that we're going to have a crowning of our little Miss Southwestern, and then we have takeout dinners. You can take it out or you can eat it here, whatever you'd like to do. And they're $25 a piece this year. And we just give thanks to God for all of you who are supporting this 
for your ads and everything. I believe the first Russell Road ad I got was from Brother and Sister Brown. And so we want to thank you. We've got a number of them since then, and some of you still turn them in right now. We are thankful, thankful, thankful for your support of the only HBCU school that's associated with the Churches of Christ. God bless you. God keep you. Thanks again, Vince. Kevin, for our Wednesday classes. If you know, if you come to our Wednesday classes, you know about the power of God and whatever book that Henry Henry going to teach out of, I'll let you know if we're able to cross over that milestone also after the brother and me. God bless you. God keep you. Let's be standing. Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus in the morning. you in spirit and truth, Father. We thank you, Father, for every member that came out. We ask to continue to bless our leadership on that meet here on Russell Road. Thank you, our minister, Brother Dancy, Russell Fisker, Fisker, and Spirit of Lord. Thank you for our Brother Vince Garden, Father. Keep him, Father, spreading your word and your gospel throughout this land. Father, we ask you, Father, continue to be with us, Father, and keeping us strong in the faith, Father. Thank you about each other, Father, and keeping each other in our prayer. Father, we cannot thank you enough for your son that died for our sin. Now, Father, as we depart this place, we ask you for your guidance, Father, until the next time of time. In Jesus' name, we do give praise for it all. Amen. 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 Amen.